Hey, you, I need you to hit the subscribe button below. I noticed you said you knew you were in Israel, right? Now, where did you get that understanding from? My brother. Your brother? What did he teach you? He taught me that the Bible was speaking the truth, uh -huh. but we wasn't being taught right. the way the Bible is really, what the Bible is really saying. Okay. So it's a trick. It's 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 so weird because. Oh, my brother was on the phone, so he hearing me. Okay, okay. He heard me. What what happened was my brother had tried to talk to me about it years right. ago. But you know, of course I was brought up in the Baptist church, right. you know, and he never knocked the way we was brought up. He okay. never knocked the way we was brought up because my mom is still Baptist right. or whatever and of course she believed what she was taught. Right. So he tried to talk to me years ago, like I said, and I heard him, but I didn't hear him uh -huh. because I do listen to my right. brother. That's my baby brother at that. And I was there for uh, Father's Day, but I was there the day before Father's Day. Mm -hmm. And on Father's Day, right, I had to get back here. Right there, big dog. I had to get back here to work. Uh -huh. So okay. I left there, which is uh, about 20 minutes outside of Daytona. Uh -huh. I left there, I got all the way to I-4, and I realized I left my purse. Right. So I had to turn around and go all the way back. So because I had to turn around and go all the way back, I had to go to my brother. Right. And, and, what, and we went to talking, right. and he went to telling me, you know, all kind of things that really made me understand, you know, and... Right. So let me get let me so let me uh and I know you you saying a lot. So he he he, he say you gotta say a certain name for him to he rather than teach you in Hebrew and stuff like that as well. Yeah. Okay. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna go into that. That I have to call him by right. his name. Okay. And let that me. the white people changed his name. Right. And okay. You know, so, so so I'm gonna deal with that. Now I wanna start with this first because. Um, you mentioned you learned that you had a very, very baby level. You yes. know, you understand the scripture foremost. If you're not keeping the commandments, it don't matter what name you say. It don't matter what you look like. None of that matters if you're not in subjection to God's law. You understand that? Read that. Yep. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 39. Now, I'm starting here to show you. When you come into the true understanding of you being an Israelite, you got to give up your life that you live right now as far as the things that you did. Like you said, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, Thanksgiving, going to the football game on the, on the Sabbath, all those things are going to have to change because what we've been programmed to do in America is all wrong and against the Bible. You understand? Right. But I'm going to show it to you scripturally. Read. He that findeth his life. He that what? He that findeth his life. Read. Shall lose it. So, what that meaning is, when you come into this understanding, you got to lose the things that you did in the world. You understand? If you, if you smoke, drink, uh, will be a drunk is nothing wrong with drinking. If you are a whoremonger, if you are theft, if you are a murderer, covetous, all these different things, you got to leave that life that you lived in the past. Read. And he that loses his life for my sake uh -huh. shall find it. Right. He that loses his life for the most high sake, you're going to find your true meaning, your true understanding. Now, I want to deal with what you said about uh, saying the name in Hebrew. Go to Zephaniah. Um, because yes, we do understand that the name that we have today, Jesus, was not what he was called when he was walking the earth. But with that being said, translation, all right, you can translate different words. You understand? Read that. Zephaniah, chapter 3 and verse 8. Uh -huh. Therefore, wait ye upon me, uh -huh. saith the Lord, Read. until the day that I rise up to the prey. Uh -huh. For my determination is to gather the nations. Right, so this is going into the end days. 
His determination is to gather all the nations and he's going to give us, he's going to destroy all the nations and we're going to get the kingdom. Read. That I may assemble the kingdoms uh -huh. to pour upon them my indignation, Read. even all my fierce anger. Good. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. So has all the earth been devo devoured yet? No, no. China's still over there. America's still here. All the earth has not been devoured. Read. For then, for what? For then. So after that happens. Will I turn to the people a pure language, uh -huh. not, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord uh -huh. to serve him with one consent? You see that? Right now, we don't serve the Lord with one consent, because yeah. we don't all speak the same language. He says one doctrine of Hebrew, another person says another doctrine of Hebrew. The Most High God ain't concerned with it. Give me that and uh, what it says, many, many, uh, come call on my name, Lord, Lord. Uh, Matthew 7, right? Matthew 7. I'm going to show you. Because that's just the front to keep you away from the commandments. Listen good to this. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. How you doing, brother? Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, uh -huh. shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. You see that? Not everybody that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, uh, Yahweh, uh, Yeshua. It don't matter. Read. But he that doeth the will of my Father. The, the will of my Father. So the, only the people that's doing the will of the Father. What? which is in heaven. Uh -huh. Many will say to me in that day, uh -huh. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Uh -huh. And in thy name have passed out devils. Uh -huh. And in thy name done many wondrous works. Read. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Uh -huh. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Ye that what? Ye that work iniquity. So people are going to say, Lord, I call on your name. I call Jesus. I call Yahweh. I call Yahweh Shai. He's going to say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Meaning they were what? They had the name, but they were not keeping the commandments of God. Give me Psalms 38 and 18. I'm going to show you what iniquity is. Brother, brother, where you at on this side? I'm still talking to you, sir. Psalm 38 and verse 18. Uh -huh. For I will declare my iniquity. I will what? I will declare my iniquity. Read. I will be sorry for my sin. I will what? Be sorry for my sin. Brother, what's sin? Do you know what sin is? Sin? Yep. Stay right there. Oh, you gotta go off right? So sin. We got a fly, y'all gave a fly. We got a school in Orlando. Come and come and holler at us, alright? So you can learn how to keep your Sabbath day correct. What's sin, brother? Sin? Yeah. As far as I know, it's going against the rules of God. Yeah, you are 100% correct. You are 100% correct. Now, with that understanding, are, are, do you think you're in the midst of sin right now? No. No? Okay. Now, where, did you, uh, where you at on this side, brother? Well, I was born in Jamaica. Okay. Yeah, so. Born in Jamaica, so you're probably from the tribe of Benjamin. That's the yeah. West Indies. Either Benjamin or Levi. Benjamin or Levi. All right, cool, cool, cool. So, Understanding that, and the reason why we go that, we understand who we are. When you go through the Bible, it outlines where these individuals are at in the last days. Right. Those that have been scattered throughout the transatlantic and sub-Saharan slave trade, those are the children of Israel, according to Deuteronomy 28 chapter. Right. Now, we were speaking about sin, where you said you weren't in the midst of sin. Give me your uh, numbers. Numbers chapter 15 and verse 38. Now this, you grew up in the church? Yeah. Okay. Now, in your understanding of the church, what do you have to do to receive salvation? Believe God and accept Him in your life. Okay, believe God and accept Him in your life. And do what? Do His works. Do His will. Which is what? what? Okay. Well, what, what are you doing? You want me to rob a stone? Does he want? But God says do good. Do good. Okay. So let's read that. Okay. Now I'm going to show you an example of what God tells us to do and how you can change to make yourself better. You understand? Because right now, what we understand is the world has not taught us the truth of the Bible. If they have, if they did, we wouldn't be in captivity right now. This is good. Numbers chapter 15 and verse 38. Uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel. Now, that's why I asked you in the beginning, what nation were you? Because if, you, if you're not an Israelite, right now ain't the time for you to keep the commandments. We're going to teach our people first and foremost. So God is talking to you. Read. And bid them that they make them fringes uh -huh. in the borders of their garments. So God is telling the Israelites to put fringes in the borders of their garments, read, throughout their generations. Now, what does it mean when someone says throughout their generations? How long is that? Forever. There you go, all three, you good, read. And that they put upon the fringe uh -huh. of the borders uh -huh. a ribbon of blue, read. and it shall be unto you for a fringe, uh -huh. that you may look upon it. And remember 
all the commandments of the Lord and do them. So, one commandment that he gave us was to put fringes and a border blue on our garments. Are you doing that right now? No. No, right? But did you, were you taught that? No. No, you weren't taught that. Go to James 4 17. So that's what we're getting at. And the longer you stay up here, the more you realize you haven't been taught a lot of stuff according to the Bible. You understand? Right. And in these last days, the Most High God has, is waking his true prophets up to teach our people the Bible. Yeah. The reason why we get shot dead in the streets, the reason why we're the last high at first five, the reason why we have baby mama, baby daddy, the reason why we're drug dealers on the streets, the reason why we live a life so we can sign a $1 million contract and blow it all on Cadillacs, is because we have been disconnected from our true heritage as the children of God. You yeah. understand that? I know that. Okay, good. So let's get into it. Read that. James chapter 4 verse 17. Uh -huh. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good. So, to him that knoweth to do good, which is the laws of God. Read. And doeth it not. And doeth it not. Read. To him it is sin. To him it is sin. So if the most high would have cracked this guy right now, you didn't know you didn't have to have money. Right? Yeah, he would forgive you because you didn't know. Right. Acts 17 and 30. That's my understanding. But now, now, guess what? This is what God's saying. Because guess what? This whole earth is going to be covered with the truth. Yeah. Everybody's going to know what they should do and what they shouldn't do. The same way you're being taught, the rest of the world is going to be taught. Read that. Acts chapter 17 and verse 30. Uh -huh. In the times of this ignorance. And the what? In the times of this ignorance. Read. God winked at it. God winked at ignorance right now. Like you said, he'll wink at it. Read. But now commanded all men uh -huh. everywhere uh -huh. to repent. But now God is commanding all men everywhere to repent. The word is going forth throughout the four corners of the earth and you have to make a choice of whether you're going to keep the commandments or not. Now, fringes is one thing. Let me ask you this. Do you know what today is according to God? No. Today is the Sabbath. You ever heard of the Sabbath day? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Now, how do you keep the Sabbath day? Do you know? No. Well, you're supposed to go by the rules of God, worship Him, I'll verify the rules that go by the group, whatever. Okay. The rules. What day did you go to church? In, 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 what day did you go to church? When did you go to church? Sundays and Saturdays. Sunday different. and Saturdays? Yeah, okay. I was going to two different. I've been to both, Saturday okay. and Sunday. Yes. So. Well, according to the Bible, from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, it's the Sabbath. It's not a choice of what day you want to keep. Now, within the Sabbath, there are certain ordinances that you must keep that's not being taught. So I'm going to teach these ordinances to you so you can apply them in your life. You understand? It's a day of what? Rest, right? The Most High rested on that day. So there's certain things that you cannot do on the Sabbath. The Most High says prepare the day before so these things can be done. Now I'm going to outline a few of those things. The first one is cooking. You're not supposed to cook on the Sabbath. Did you know that? Yeah. Okay, read that. Exodus 35 and verse 3. Uh -huh. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations uh -huh. upon the Sabbath day. Upon the Sabbath day, you can't cook. Right. You can't cook on the Sabbath day. That should have been done the day before. When you go to Exodus 16, it outlines what happened. Right? Because uh, when we were in the wilderness, he brought down double the amount of quail and uh, manna so we could gather the day before and we would be good. Likewise today, you go to the store on Friday, you make sure you have what you need for, for the Sabbath day. The same thing. Now, that's, you understood that. Go to uh, Nehemiah 10 and 31. So the first thing, you're not to cook on the Sabbath. You prepare the day before, you'll be good. Nehemiah 10 and 31. Nehemiah chapter 10 and verse 31. Uh -huh. And if the people of the land bring where or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, uh -huh. that we would not buy them. So on the Sabbath day, you're also not to buy and sell. So all these people going to shopping, catching the doorbuster sale at J.C. Penney's, going to the movies on Friday night, all that stuff is against the laws of God. Good. You understand that? Yeah. You can't buy and sell on the Sabbath. Finish that. That we would not buy of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day. Or on the holy day because you have Pentecost, you have tabernacles, you have uh, huh? Per, yeah, Passover, so on and so forth. Right. All these other days are kept as Sabbaths as well. Meaning they have the same guidelines. You reverence them in the same way. You understand? Now, let's go to Exodus 20. Bring it out. So we went over buying and selling. We went over cooking. Now we're going to go over working. You're not to work on the Sabbath day. Exodus 20 and verse 8. Uh -huh. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Uh -huh. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. Uh -huh. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, 
nor thy daughter, uh -huh. thy manservant, uh -huh. nor thy maidservant, Reed? nor thy cattle, uh -huh. nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, uh -huh. the sea, and all that in them is, uh -huh. and rested the seventh day. So the same way the Most High God rested, he commands us to rest. We didn't do the work of the Father on the Sabbath day. But if you serve our work, going to, the, going to Walmart, checking in, going, no. All of that is done on the Sabbath. Because what should you be doing? Worshiping God. There you go, Leviticus 23. Reload! You have to be around a body of believers. Contrary to popular belief, you can't be alone and worship God. When it says two or three of God, that's, that's no. You have to be around a body of believers. Christ Look. had 12 disciples himself. Read that. Leviticus 23 and verse 2. Uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel uh -huh. and say unto them, concerning the feast of the Lord, uh -huh. which he shall proclaim to be holy convocations. To be what? Holy convocations. Uh -huh. Even these are my feasts. So it's a holy convocation, Hebrews 10, 25. Meaning it's a holy gathering. You got to get yourself around like-minded believers so you can get the understanding of the Bible. Because when you look at our people today, most people that want to keep to themselves, they're in the midst of evil and wickedness. They say, I don't chill with the brothers, I don't chill. And the most wicked woman you ever meet is a woman that say, I don't chill with a woman. What do you mean? What do you mean you, you can't be friends with Because they're some wicked individuals. They take their man, they sleep with them, they, they're wicked. Same thing with brothers. Brothers like to keep to themselves. They're selfish. They don't want to share. They don't want, they, you don't want to have any charity amongst anybody else, so you keep to yourself. Right. But that's not what God said. Read that. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. Uh -huh. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. So the Bible says don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Read. As the manner of some is. Because that is the spirit of a lot of our people. You got independent woman. You got whatever brother they say what? I'm a made man. I did it by myself. I get it all. All that understanding is what America put in you. God didn't put that spirit in us. God said we were a nation of brothers and sisters. A royal priesthood. Read. But exhorting one another. Uh -huh. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Now, with the understanding, so you, you believe all that? All that makes sense? You're into life, you got to keep the commandments? You believe that? Yeah. Okay, good. So let me ask you this. You got any questions, Biblical? You got any Biblical questions? No Biblical questions? Bring it up. You believe, so you believe we got to keep the commandments of God? Yeah. Good, good, good. So you don't eat pork? Yeah. You eat pork? Uh, no, 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 I don't eat pork. Okay, good, 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 good. good. Keep the Sabbath day. You know you got to put your fridges on. You know you got to do that, right? Good, good, good. Read that. That's so now I want to support my statement with the scripture. Because when you leave here, Pastor Pork Chop down the street, he going to tell you, you ain't got to keep the commandments, right? You probably heard that before. I want to make sure you're equipped when somebody comes contrary to what the Bible says. Read that. Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. Uh -huh. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. So the Bible says, don't think that I have come to destroy the law. Read. Or the prophets. Uh -huh. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So the Bible says, I did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. Specifically, the law of sacrifice. Read. For very, I say unto you, uh -huh. till heaven and earth pass. Has heaven and earth pass, brother? Has heaven and earth pass away? No. Read. One jot or one tittle uh -huh. shall in no wise pass from the law. So the law still stands. All those laws that we just read about uh, keeping the Sabbath day correctly, that still is to be upheld today. That's read. right. Till all be fulfilled. Uh -huh. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments. Whoever breaks the commandments, read. And shall teach men so. And you teach others, read. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Meaning you're going to be a, a carcass in the kingdom of heaven. That's what that means. You're going to be dead. Let's back it up. Let's go to Isaiah 66 in verse 23. Because remember, I mentioned earlier about the keeping of the commandments and I mentioned the feast days. You have the Sabbath, you have the new moon, you have the high holy day, Pentecost, Tabernacle, uh, Purim, so on and so forth. Listen good. Listen what God says about the last days. Read that. Isaiah 66 and verse 23. Verse 22. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, uh -huh. shall remain before me, uh -huh. saith the Lord. So now he's speaking about the new heavens and new earth, right? Remember Christ just said, 
uh, until the heavens and earth pass away. This is what I'm talking about. Read. So shall your seed and your name remain, uh -huh. and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another. That from what? One new moon to another. Meaning we're going to be keeping the new moon in heaven. Right. 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 So guess what? You should be rehearsing the righteous acts right now. Read. And from one Sabbath to another. And from what? One Sabbath to another. Meaning we're going to be keeping the Sabbath day in the kingdom of heaven. Right. Read. Right. Shall all flesh come to worship before me. You see that? All flesh is going to come before the most high God. Read. Say it the Lord. Uh-huh. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcass. Hold on now. In the kingdom of heaven, you're going to what? And look upon the carcass uh -huh. of the men that have transgressed against me. So in the kingdom of heaven, those leaf is what we just read about right there. A lot of people think that means you're going to be in the kingdom of heaven and be in the midst of sin. No, that's not what that's talking about. Read that again. You're going to look upon what? Look upon the carcass uh -huh. of the men that have transgressed against me. Read. For their worm shall not die. You see that? So in the kingdom of heaven, those bodies of those individuals that wanted to remain in the midst of sin, that didn't want to wear fringes, that didn't want to keep the Sabbath day, that didn't want to not shave their beard, God says you're going to walk over their carcass while you go to keep the Sabbath day. He's going to leave it like that for a little bit for a reminder. So you don't try the most high. That you understand the severity of keeping his commandments. Right. But that's why we out here right now to teach our brothers and sisters the true way to go so you don't end up like that. Go to Zephaniah 2 and 1. Let me show you what God says that all men of Israel should be doing. The men and the women. Because we, we, we were brought here together, we're going to leave here together. Read that. Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Gather yourselves together. What does the Bible say? Gather yourselves together. Read. Yes. Gather together, uh -huh. O nation, not desire. Who on the face of the earth is less desired than the so-called black man? No. The so-called no. Haitian, the so-called no. Jamaican, the so-called Dominican, the so-called uh, 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 Guyanese, so on and so forth. So nobody is looking for us. When you go to the, uh, what is it called, the uh, NATO, the, the, what is the table of nations, what's it called? The, the United Nations. Where does the African-American man sit at? Bring it out. He don't have a seat at the table. Showing you that what? We are the nation that is not desired. Right. Jamaica, you go to Jamaica right now, the Chinese run Jamaica. Right. The Chinese man, you go to Haiti, Haiti still, well, how much money did they, they raise? Billions of dollars and built what, like two houses? Yeah, right. We are the people that are not desired on the face of the earth. Puerto Rico, earthquake came. Now everybody left, the white man came, bought up the whole island. We as a people, all these people on the sign is the nation that's not desired. Read that again. Gather yourselves together. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. Gather together. Uh huh. Old nation, not desired. Old nation, what? Not desired. Read. Before the decree break forth. Uh huh. Before the day pass at the chat. Uh huh. Before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. You see that? Before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon this land. Because America is Babylon the Great, contrary to popular belief. Right. And this land that we're standing on is going to be burnt up. Right. So it will behoove you to begin to keep the commandments of the Most High God. Go to Ephesians 5 and 11. You married? You are married? Now let me ask you this. Your wife, is she on the side? Good, good, good. Now in your marriage, is it been good that you run the household? Right now, 50 50. Oh, all right. Now, why is that? Now, I'm glad for your honor. Give me a piece of and start at verse 21. Now, why, why do you say it's 50 50? She works, you don't work, what's the situation? Well, we both work, okay, but we have been having a lot of disagreements lately, so. Okay. Now, is she, a, is she a person of faith? Yeah. Does she believe in the Bible? Yeah. Okay, good. So, these are some scriptures you can take to her, but guess what? God said it ain't no 50 50 in his relationship. That's right. When you're in the Bible, the man is to rule over his woman. That's, you know? That's the way it's supposed to be. But guess what? You got to stand up and demand your role in the household. You understand that? But guess what? You can't do that right now because you're not keeping the commandments. She can't truly respect you as a man of God when you're not living what the Bible says. You understand that? But guess what? When you put the fringes on your garment, when you're keeping the Sabbath day, when you're doing all the things you're supposed to, she got to bow down to submission to a, to a true man of God. You understand that? That's right. Go to Genesis 3 and 16 first, and then we're going to go to Revelation 14 and 4. Because it goes both ways. Because guess what? When you say 50-50, 
50-50, that's really zero to 100 for the woman. Ain't no such thing as that. And if you're not ruling over that woman, she's ruling you. I guarantee you. Read that. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. Uh -huh. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow, uh -huh. and thy conception, Read. and sorrow. Thou shalt bring forth two, uh -huh. and thy desire shall be to thy husband. So the scripture says that the woman's desire should be to thy husband. You listen? Read. And he, and he what? Shall rule over thee. The man, brother, you shall rule over your wife. That's according to the Bible. Read that again. And what? And he what? And he shall rule over thee. It's your job to rule over your wife. Now, does that mean you tell her to stand up, sit down? To, no. That means your word is law in your household. That's right. Because that woman is your responsibility. Right. You, you're not, you're not, uh, she was taken from you. You understand that? Y'all not equal. Y'all not equal. Let's get the order real quick. First Corinthians 11, and let's start at verse 3. God made you a ruler of the earth. Dominion was given to you to rule the earth, not the woman. Read that. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. Uh -huh. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So your head is Christ. Are you 50-50 with Christ? No. No. Whatever Christ said, you do it, right? Yeah. Read. And the head of the woman uh -huh. is the man. And what? And the head of the woman is the man. So that same relationship that all of us have with Christ, that's the relationship that woman has to have with you. Right. That's it's supposed to be. Right. right. Meaning that's dominion that's is coming to you. Now, this is your job. Revelation 14 and 4. This is what God says. All men that can't set that order up in their household, you are not worthy of the kingdom of heaven if you're not able to rule over that woman. How are we going to rule over the world and we can't control the woman at home? That makes sense? Read that. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 4. Uh -huh. These are they which were not defiled with women. What did the Bible say? These are they which were not defiled with women. So the 144,000 men that are going to set up and rule the earth and rule all the nations, right. all the heathen, we're going to own the white man. We're going to own the Chinese man. Right. We're going to own the African man. Right. We're going to own the Arab man. Right. God says your first test before you can have dominion over the earth is going to be in your household. Read that again. These are they which were not defiled with women. The Most High God says he can't give you that rulership if you are defiled with a woman. Give me Micah 7 and 5. Because only when you read the Bible, the Bible says that the woman is the strongest thing on the face of the earth. She's stronger than wives, she's stronger than money, she's stronger than all that. So if you're able to control her, you can rule the earth. But right now, the majority of our men can't do that. Read that. Micah chapter 7 verse 5. Trust ye not in a friend. The Bible says trust ye not in a friend. Read. Put ye not confidence in a God. Uh -huh. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that life in thy bosom. So the most High God is telling you, brother, in their relationship, you got to keep the preeminence of the woman. Right. All right? Go to the Sirach, I think it's 33, and start at 18. I want where it says, keep the preeminence. Keep the preeminence. How y'all doing over there? How you doing, sis? You know what today is according to God? Today is the Sabbath day. You know that? Come on in and learn about, hey, sis, come on over here. Don't go in and waste your money on somebody else, man. I want to teach you the truth of who you are according to the Bible. That's right. God says you above all people upon the face of the earth. The way God made you is better than every other woman on the face of the earth. You have to assimilate to any other culture or nationality. You are the standard of beauty. All right, you got that? Sirach 33 and 18. Start that. Sirach chapter 33 and verse 18. Start at 17. Verse 17. Uh -huh. Consider that I labored not for myself but for all them that seek learning. So, we are not out here for ourselves. We are here for you brothers and sisters to learn who you are according to the Bible and repent according to the scriptures. Read. Hear me, O ye great men of the people, uh -huh. and hearken with your ears, Read. ye rulers of the congregation. Ye rulers. God has given instructions to the men that are going to rule the earth and that are going to rule over the congregations in the earth. Listen good. Hold on. I got you. Listen to the last scripture. Read. Give not thy son uh -huh. and wife 
Yeah, what? Give not thy son and wife, uh -huh. thy brother and friend, uh -huh. power over thee. You see that? The Bible says do not give that woman power over you. Believe it or not, if y'all in a 50-50 relationship, she is running that relationship. You got to go home today and set that thing in order. But the first thing you got to do, brother, you need to come around these brothers up there. You got to come and learn how to guide your household according to your wife. Because right now you don't know. And it's evident in the way you carry yourself. You read? Right, verse 22. In uh -huh. all thy works, uh -huh. keep to thyself the preeminence. What the Bible say? In all thy works, keep to thyself the preeminence. Meaning there's no such thing as 50-50 if you keep in the preeminence. You understand that, brothers? Right. So make sure you set that thing in order. That's what God is tasking you with today. Second is uh 14 and 13. Let me show you what God says about that. How are you to set that thing in order? God already knew that, that these things were going to happen in the last days. Read that. Second Ezra, chapter 14 and verse 13. Uh -huh. Now therefore, set thine house in order. What did the Bible say? Now therefore, set thine house in order. God is telling you black men, Hispanic men, Native American men, to set your houses in order. Right. It's high time for the black man to take his place back on the face of the earth. Good. Read. And reprove thy people. Uh -huh. Comfort such of them as be in trouble. And your job is to comfort those that are in trouble. If you're looking at the earth today, the earth of America is out of order. Right, right. The man has become a woman and the woman has become a man. Right. There is no order in the structure of the household here in America. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how we're men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.